I was talking to Ty Fontaine on here the other Ty day. Fontaine. Ty Fontaine. And he struck me as somebody who seems like a very good match for you because he was just describing like being in the studio working on music for months and months and he did not seem like he minded at all. He was like hundred percent. Yeah, down. the thing with him is I don't have to tell Ty to do anything. Right. Ty just pulls up, I'm out back, I'm I'm kicking it, catching a vibe, he pulls up. And he'll just go do 10 songs and right. he'll just pop out when he's done and he'll smoke and we'll just kick it. But that's like, it's good. And I just go through and I'm like, all right, cool. We get 10 songs. He already knows how it works. I'm going to look at this shit like, boom, take seven of them. Mm. We'll keep three for something else. But, but when you first brought him in, how much coaching were you really doing in terms of like, like, because I, I knew that his music was solid, but I then saw him start working with you and all of a sudden his shit got like really good. Like his new project, I was crazy impressed when I listened to that. It was, I don't think I like taught him how to make music. He was like doing that. There's definitely been cases where I had to do that. The thing with him is he's just, he can do everything every rapper does better than every other rapper. Mm. So it's like, I literally just speak to him. I think, I think for the longest time, the coaching wasn't with music shit. I think it was just like him being around and seeing how we move and how we work and like how shit goes and kind of like, our standard you know mm. what i mean and like how he's seen people come in get fucking chewed out because they don't want to work and i gotta i gotta basically be the artist for him or people that don't want to be a fucking artist mm. like i can't want it more than you want it right but he was there through all that whenever he wasn't getting studio time it's the artists don't want to show up to it he's up in there and he fucking does four songs while they show up and it was a fucking hassle for them to get there right. and they maybe do one song you got to really be willing to work your ass off in that environment. He that, sacrifices yeah. a lot. Mm. Yeah. He was living in my garage, bro. Right. Literally living in my garage, going to bed, doing 10 songs a night for two months straight like until you, now. You ever have any like crazy shit happen from having like a dozen fucking young men living in your house? Like anything could happen, right? Like I was asking Ty, like do girls come through and does it ever get crazy? And he's like, oh, no, nah, because we only bring girls that are respectful and, and what? know what's going on. And I'm like, I'm like, there's no way that you could know beforehand. Like some of the craziest girls I ever met in my life seemed totally normal when I first met them. Uh, yeah, females do be coming in there and I'm like, <laughs> they're in my, they're in my house. Crazy shit do be going on. And it's my job to be everybody's goddamn stepdaddy. Right. So how often do you have to like get involved and like really tell somebody like, yo, this girl can't come around no, no, no. she's bad for Never you. like that. No, not like that. No. Nah. It's advice, it's not like an order. Uh, nah, it's never even I don't never tell them do or don't uh -huh. because I don't get involved in people's like situations. If they are feel confident enough, like think about it, bro. Big ass house full of people. There's producers in here ages from twenty eight to seventeen, right? Mm -hmm. In this house working. If you feel confident enough with a girl to bring her around 12 other guys, it must be something serious, bro. You mm. know what I mean? You just ain't bringing no random girls to the to the house. Mm. I, I should, like... 12 producers, though, because I've definitely brought girls around, like, a bunch of rappers and then realized pretty quickly that it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> no, nah, I got rappers in the house all the time. <laughs> oh, okay, you got rappers, too. I okay. got ra Yeah, you're right. That's yeah, bro, sense, like, yeah. people be coming to the house. Tega be coming to the house. A lot of people be coming to the house. Like, it's like... I don't know. I just don't mix the two. And mm. I just I just give people advice if they ask for it. Right. That's all I do. If they come to me and they're like, so-and-so happened or this is not happened, how should I handle it? And I'll give them my advice on it. Because I'm, I'm 27 years old, so it's like, you know, right. I could offer them a little bit of advice. Do you, could you ever see yourself, or do you, do you have your own space that you can sort of retreat to, or do you, you, <laughs> you're, you're dedicated to just living in that environment? Do you ever feel like you need space? But I... Yeah, but nah, I can't. The minute I the minute I step away from this shit and I don't move how I move and do what I do, there's a lot of people who's like depending on it. Mm. So it's like I feel like as I've let go of like I don't want to say the word control. I don't want to say that because that's like a very overpowering word. But as I've let go of like the reins, right, and let other people kind of delegate and do their jobs, shit just got fucked up. Right. Because like at the end of the day, like if I'm signing an artist, it's because I'm passionate about them. If I'm signing a producer, it's because I'm passionate about them. I have a vision for them and they understand that vision and we're moving together on it. My job is I ain't got to get everybody else in order. Me and this artist have something that we're trying to get done. You right. know what I mean? And I ain't got time spending two weeks trying to get people excited about new artists. Mm, definitely. I mean, it's just sort of like 
it's it's a crazy lifestyle that you sort of carved out for yourself because of the fact that you become like really close and like super good friends with these people, but knowing that there might be a shelf life on this relationship. Like, is it ever like a kind of thing where you start working with an artist and then they just, and they want to be recording every day, every day, but then eventually you're just kind of like, you know what? <laughs> maybe I was wrong. Maybe, maybe your career is not going to turn into anything. I got to, you got to, you got to get out of here. I think it just gets to a point where once I'm giving more than I'm getting in terms of like, if I'm the one waking up every day telling you what you should be doing mm. in terms of like the music you should be making, if I'm telling you to do fucking TikToks and trailers and maybe, hey, bro, go go get, go get pick out an outfit, go do a post for Instagram, go do shit like that. If I'm having to do that to an over excessive amount and I'm basically, it's like a fucking Sims character, bro. Mm. I got to click and tell you when to go fucking piss, go do all that. I'm not interested now. I'll just tell you to go on somewhere. But what if their music is like really good? What if they're really capable? If they're like the next trippy red but like you know trippy red is like curating his own existence on instagram if he's like really good musically but you have to do all that work for him i think everything is just about a conversation if people are open to being not like if they're open to the situation that they know they're getting into it and that money mm. if they want my advice and they want my help and they want all that shit cool it's not like always you better do this and this needs to get done or fucking else it's always just like they know I'm the one person who's always going to keep it real with them. Mm. No matter what. If I don't like something, I'll say I don't like it. And they respect that. And not every artist is easy to work with. There's a lot of artists who are very hard to work with. And that's kind of what makes this job grueling. Mm. Is the fact that there is difficult artists to work with. But you got to work with them. But in terms of who lives with you, are you at this point just committed to like really only working with artists that you fuck with, that you respect, that you like the way that they act towards you? Because a lot of times you might find somebody who's a really amazing artist but they're a fucking asshole and living with them is just impossible. No, nah, I don't require everybody to live with me at Internet Money. I got artists right. on to me that I just see they come out here and they work. Like Two Rays in Philadelphia has a big song going crazy right now called like Big Dripper. I don't have like uh, that much of a relationship with him. He goes and does his thing whenever he comes out to L.A. Like we work and it's my job to handle the music on that. Mm. But it's not like he's living with me where I'm like, all right, bro, you're not fucking putting the toilet seat down, like, all right, bro, get it together. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? You could, like, deal with people in different capacities. Yeah, every situation is different. And, like, I think it all depends on just everybody's attitude. Like I said, it all goes back to, like, just being up front and being honest. Right. But how much do you feel the need to get involved in the, the promotional stuff like that, like telling somebody to make a TikTok or, or like, you know. Bro, you'd be amazed. What? So you, you get all up in it? You're, you're, you, you that's like, that's like promotional routines? tools now as a label. Right, but do you come up with the dance routines for the no. songs ever? No. No, okay. I sit back with a camera and watch and laugh. And you watch the kids come up with it, right? Yeah. Come on, man. Why you make it seem weird, man? I'm like, not going to dance on I'm over here watching TikTok. the kids do it. Come on, bro. Nah, <laughs> I'm bro. I'm just saying, Pete, my girl's always First like, of all, oh, these are not dance kids, on TikTok. Bro. I'm like, no. These are not kids. Not I'm that. a 27-year-old man. These kids are, Ty is 20. Okay. Spirit's 20. Alec is 19? 19. These, like... They're young men. Okay, but when does it become weird? Because I definitely went through that where I was like a 24-year-old dude with like a you house think I'm with like, like a whole <laughs> shitload of BMX dudes sleeping on the floor. And then one day I'm like 33 and I'm like, oh, wow, this, this doesn't feel the same. Or people might not perceive this as the same as when I was 10 years younger. Nah, I don't think of it like that. It's kind of weird. It might come around eventually. I've never thought about it like that. Really? Never. I've never been like, all right, this is getting kind of weird. Right. Because it's not like I'm. The commenters will let you know when they start thinking it's weird. Because I mean, I'm not going to be like fucking Hugh Hefner with a fucking <laughs> slew of Playboy producer bunnies fucking right. running around the goddamn house. Nah, bro. Like, I think I had to do it like this because I'm kind of teaching these people how to be like. I'm mm. like a, a father figure to a lot of these people, bro. Right. And I don't mean that in like a weird way, like a real like I'm. A lot of people in our money, we didn't have dads and shit growing up. So there's people in our money, the older people who like. We're kind of that for a lot of people. Right. We're no, kinda, like, I just feel like safe. It's safe. A lot of people online, it's it's weird how there's that impulse to make it like a creepy thing if you're like around dudes who are younger than you. But it's like, why does it have to be a creepy thing? From my perspective, there's a lot of BMX riders that used to fucking sleep on my couch that will tell you that I had a huge role in them basically like figuring out what the fuck to do with their lives. I mean, lives. how old is like the phase people? 
Yeah, yeah. No, well, I don't know how old Fizz Banks is. They, might I, be I've been around 30. there, and they're doing like crazier shit than I'm doing. Shit that's like. Yeah. And the Fortnite You know what bosses, I mean? Like, I'm just in a house making music, bro. I'm not doing nothing weird. I'm not Fortnite running around doing challenges or pranks. Like 14 killing it. And also, yeah, they have crazy ass parties with like alcohol and rappers. And I don't do that. Yeah. I That's, used to have the LA parties. I used to be hip until you got to clean up them LA fucking parties mm, and ain't no one there to do the motherfucking things. Right. And then you just like, man, fuck this shit. Right. I don't do that shit, bro. We just work on music. There ain't no weird shit. No one ever thought about it like some weird shit. Mm. Definitely. This is the first time anyone's ever thought about like some weird shit. I'm being real with you, bro. No one's ever told me like, Taz, you're 27 years old. It's getting time. No, I'm telling you what you're <laughs> in for as a dude because I remember when nobody thought it was weird that I was driving around in a van every day with a bunch of BMX dudes. And then I remember like seeing it slowly become like people are like, why are you sitting at this rail at this high school? And I was like, well, I mean, I've been doing this since I was like 15. <laughs> Nah, I haven't been doing this like that long now. Because yeah. you just got to understand my story, bro. Where the fuck I come from. Mm. And all that shit. Like, my situation. I was with... I have a five-year-old son. Mm. I have a baby mama. You know what I mean? I was in a relationship. And I left that shit to come out here and do this shit. Because I couldn't be able to do it from Florida. Mm. So it's not like I was always going through the years. Like, I'm some eighth grade senior fucking college dropout or something. Like... Mm. Let's go, still get the party going. Nah, bro. Just like I came out here, there's a lot of people who leave other situations that they got going on. Mm. And we just sacrifice, bro. Like, we don't, you think I want to be in a house with a bunch of men 24 7, bro? Like, hell nah, the shit stinks all the fucking time. You got people, because there's different levels and shit. People got different backgrounds. You don't know how people were raised. Like, I know being in my, my house with my mom, if I would have left the cup out or do this shit, my mom beating me with a fucking whatnot. There was a dude who slept on my floor for maybe a weekend or two and his feet smelled so bad. Have you had any like stinky feet? Like he had a blanket. No. Shout out Tammy. Shout out Tammy McCarley. He, his feet smelled Man, so bad. We had to blast. get rid of this blanket because he slept using it and his feet smelled so bad. I'm sure his feet are totally fine now. Have you had any bad feet smell issues or any like real bad hygiene I don't know if stuff? you see me, bro, but I'm not getting down low enough to smell anybody's feet. You didn't have to get low at all. It was, it was. I mean, eyeball then that's a, that that's a that's a PP with y'all and y'all homeboy. I didn't get close to the feet. Could if you, you can smell his feet, I'm telling you, bro. then that's a problem. I'm telling you, that's like a that's like, like a doctor problem. Yeah. What is no, that? There definitely should have been Bunions medical or professionals involved for sure. That's crazy. Um. Okay, but, but no, I don't deal with I don't deal with stinky feet. And if there's something going on, the most I deal with is like, all right, bro, can y'all fucking wash y'all's goddamn dishes? Right. All right, right Brecky, y'all take the fucking trash out. A little shit like that. I'm sure you deal with in the same place. Oh, I used to deal with that so bad. I mean, I, I would have dudes that were living with me that, like, I would walk into their room and the windows would be all open. There'd be like 50 to 100 beer cans open. Shout out Stevie. And there would be flies everywhere, just over the. I would just start losing my mind. I'm like, I just woke up. It's like eight in the morning. I'm grabbing the beer cans, losing it. At least you don't you don't have a lot of like drinkers at the house for the most part. I would assume. Nah, bro. These kids are good kids, bro. Right. The most they do is just some will smoke weed if that's their fancy, if that's what they want to do. Mm. But they're of age to smoke weed. Right. But it's weird because now everybody like, if you're in your position and if you were to like know that people that lived with you were popping pills and shit, it's like you'd be putting exposing yourself to a lot of liability. Aside from the fact that you know people who are on pills are just annoying. There's as fuck. no listen, bro. I grew up around nothing but addiction. Mm. I seen I seen my aunt swallow fucking thirty somas at one time, like overdosing out the mouth, fucking foaming hot Cheetos and shit. Mm. Like I don't I don't I don't do addiction. I don't fuck with people that do addiction. And the craziest thing is like. These questions you're like trying to beat around and ask around about like why I don't fuck with certain people or why I don't like certain people has to do with addiction. Mm. I don't deal with that. So you, you're comfortable kicking somebody out of your life? if they're... I'm 100% comfortable because at the end of the day, I can't want it for you. Mm. You've dealt with this shit, bro. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. People, you've seen this fucking like drug addicts and shit, bro. Right. I've dealt with, I've dealt with too much shit in my life mm. to get another phone call. I've dealt with too much shit in my life to be woken up again mm. by someone asking for comment on something. Right. So it's like, I don't, I don't fuck around with that shit. And if anybody in my life comes around with that shit, they're done. I cut them off. Mm. Because then they, I got to do this shit for my son. I got to do this shit for everybody. There's people on internet money that have kids mm -hmm. that rely on me to be able to push this shit forward for everybody so they can provide for their families. So mm. their families aren't looking at them like they're crazy 
26 years old, 25 years old, still trying to be a producer? Mm. Yeah, bitch, I got gold records. I got platinum records. Like, I still have people dealing with this every day on internet money. Mm -hmm. And I got to do what I do. I ain't got time to be fucked up off no pills or no bullshit out here. No lean. Mm -hmm. No, none of this is shit, bro. That shit goofy to me, bro. The lean, like, it, the lean and the pills and stuff, it only seems cute for so long. But, like, once you see people, like, really, like, itching, trying to get some fucking drank. Bro, I see it all the time in <laughs> fucking studio sessions, bro. It's not bro. cool. Yeah, it's not fun. It, I'd be in the studio and there'd be real motherfucking, like, addicts in there, bro. That should be crazy. Uh -huh. Every drug that you can imagine I've had offered to me in a studio session. Mm -hmm. I don't... This is all I do. And I just recently started doing this. Mm. And if I didn't start smoking weed, I would have killed a couple people. Really? It helped you chill out a little bit? Yeah, bro. Mm. I used to be crazy. Like, literally, though. But that's because, like, I learned everything myself. Mm. I dropped down to seventh grade. I didn't go to high school and mingle with people and do all this shit. I just started selling beats on the internet to pay for my mom's cancer bills. Mm. And then I didn't ask to get here. So when people are coming to me crazy, I'm looking like I'm just doing what I got to do mm. to get to the next point definitely another classic interview in the books if you guys enjoyed this make sure you like comment and subscribe and head on over to nojumper.com to support appreciate y'all